Hello folks and welcome back to the second part of this series and I hope you like the first one where we created the basic web part. If you haven't, please do check out the previous video. Now in this one, we are going to extract our graph functionality from our card into a library component. Now, what is a library component? It's actually the common, it's, it's like an NPM package, think about it like that, which offers common functionality to any project which wants to consume it. In old fashioned world, it's sort of a DLL, uh, which we used to have, and we could just give that DLL to anyone and he could use all those functions over here. Similar to NPM package, as I already said, but certain differences over there. NPM package is more open source -y. Uh, It's most of the time platform or rather framework agnostic. So uh, a package, for example, as, um, a good example of any package, Gulp, for example, right? This would work across all Angular, SharePoint, React, all those kind of pipelines, right? But in library component of SPFX is specifically designed by Microsoft to work within SharePoint context. So it has all that context built into it. That's the one thing. Second thing is about hosting. You don't have to host it into NPM registries and you know, blah, 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 blah. What you could do is just build your package exactly the same way as we are um, conversant with SPFX development. It's the same process. Everything stays the same. We build it and we upload it to the common app catalog, drag and drop, approve it, and you're good to go. Very easy to use as compared to NPM in terms of hosting and releasing and so on and so forth. So that's a good point. Drawback is two. The first is that versioning is a problem. Let's say you have go project A using version one of library component, and then you have project B uh, using library uh, version 2 of the library component the one which will get downloaded irrespective of how many versions are over there is the latest one I think uh, but it will always be one library component you know it will not it's it's not it's not possible for you to for a project A to download one version project B to download another project that is unfortunately that's not that's not the way it works honestly I'm not very clear on why that's the case um, it will be interesting to, to know that and I'll do some more reading about that. And if you know, please do let me know. So that's one drawback. The second drawback is, you know, in SPFX projects, we could always use, we, we could always add more web parts. You can always do yo at Microsoft SharePoint. Now add me another web part, add me another web part, add me another part. You can run yo commands within one project multiple times and it will create those web parts in a separate folder. Unfortunately, that's not possible in library components. It has to be one folder. You can only run your command once because um, the index.d.ts file, which exposes all the functionality, you cannot have more than one for library components specifically. Now, you can add multiple functionalities. For example, you can add in one library framework component uh, the, the functionality of graph, the functionality to talk to app insights, the functionality to talk to any or data rest api non microsoft for example using fetch command if you want to do you can do all those things by adding separate files but you cannot create a you know you cannot use the generator human generator to scaffold these files for yourself you have to add manually uh, to them honestly i'm not sure what's going on over there uh, but those are the drawbacks bottom line if we are doing SPFX development and we need common functionality across all our cards. Preferably, please do use um, the library component, SPFX library components. But if the requirement is much more broad, it would be required in other front end application which are non Microsoft, non SPFX C, then probably NPM JS is a better option for you. So, having done all the theory aside, let's go ahead and create a library component. Let's quickly go ahead and scaffold our library. Uh, okay, I need you, Microsoft SharePoint. Please scaffold me a new library. Let it be framework. It would be a library extension, library name. Let's call it Graph Service. Yeah, and then let and video editing do its magic. 
and we can Okay, so our project is scaffolded properly. Let's do a gulf build just to see everything was working okay. That was the project, so source libraries it created. Seems to be working okay. Now, look at the way the project is scaffolded. I have a graph service folder. Let's say if I wanted to use App Insights also here, I could also have done in a standard you know in a traditional spfx project i could again run the yo at microsoft command and scaffold um, and scaffold the project right unfortunately that's not possible in spf in the library component i cannot run one more and then say yo microsoft and give me app insights it will create another folder it will do all the scaffolding but once you start building it it will complain because it only the library component expects only one entry point i think it's somewhere in over here so it cannot have so th the moment there are two entries over here one for a graph service and other for apps insights the the build process will break i'm not quite sure why that is happening i need to talk to guys who are more intelligent than i am um luckily there are people uh, and uh, if I get an answer, then I will let you know. But if, if somebody of you has any knowledge about why that is the case, please do let me know. I would be very curious to know about it. So, but anyways, so this is working for us. Uh, the important thing we need to do now is to copy paste our previous code. Uh, you know, that graph code in which we wrote in our previous um, functionality uh, function session and then put it and then put it over there. So I will copy bunch of code over there. Control V oh my god what is going on so why is he complaining so much oh, well of course glories be to the type script type script because of course i need to export it uh, again it was a class earlier but i am exporting it as a function export get project data i think i also need to import some uh, because it's using the graph ms graph client and so and so forth so i think i need to import some code over here copy uh, uh, of course it should be export function what am i doing so ooh, now it's good so right now um i'm only exporting that function which i need uh, exactly the same thing i haven't done anything new uh, if I go to index T, it's still exporting the class by previous one. I don't really need that right now. Not at least for the time being. I will do this. Does it work? Gulp build. Let's see. Sure, it does. I have some semicolons warning. Uh, by the way, I just a side note, a quick tip. Uh, I really don't like typing so many semicolons so the thing I do always is to go over here and then say semicolon is false just don't stop just stop bothering me about it 
So my project is built now. What do I need to do to make it a library? Uh, to consume it basically with other applications. The trick over here is to use some a command called npm link. What it basically does is interesting. It it's a node thing, of course. Um, it for all the normal npm packages, it downloads it and puts it in a global registry in a folder somewhere in our hard drive. With npm link, it creates a virtual link in that folder to our project. He says, okay, hey, uh, npm or node, if any time you are looking for this library, which is framework, then go and talk to this project, you know, wherever this project is located, that's where the source code is, it, source code is kept. That's what npm link does. The opposite is npm unlink, so that means remove that virtual connection between this and if somebody is looking for this library, it doesn't exist anymore. So I'll do npm link so that this folder, this project, my framework project is available to npm to be consumed in any other application which would like to use it. So let it run that way. Uh, I will, if I could just move it to the side like Let's make it like this and then we will have our consuming application which was our next meeting project uh, which we did in a previous video. Let me put it over here. So it would be a bit cleaner. So let's do it because we have to run, we have to do parallel development on both the sides. Um, let's do it this way. NPM link is done which is pretty pretty nice that was my old implementation my old get graph method which honestly I don't need now so I can just do control PC and it will start complaining hey that this function doesn't exist we will fix that in a minute for the timing I would remove the set time interval thingy because it's let's not add more complication but if you see the project on github uh, it is over there. The, the full implementation is over there. So let me go back a bit over there. Um, okay, now the way to consume my project, my framework in any project is to npm do an npm link again. So let's go ahead. I do a clear. So uh, what I need to do to use this in my code is to say npm link and then type in the name of my solution, which is framework, right? So I will simply copy paste it. Control C, Control V, paste it. And now it's telling me that that's the location where I will try to find this project because that's where I have kept it, right? Uh, and now I can go ahead, just like any other project, SPFX thingy, I can simply say import graph data from framework. So now this function will pass on to this one and then I can simply use it. And now I can simply use it. So that's the way you see it works pretty cool uh, everything stays the same I am using this function directly and I have my comment is but it's still showing me some error somewhere I think there is a colon missing which is always dangerous with JavaScript and it should I think be this one so if I do this it should work now save it uh, so we have consumed this one over here. Let's do a gulp build just to see everything works fine. Okay, and then I do a gulp. So if everything goes right, we should see our meeting loaded. And it doesn't work. Though I have a meeting, uh, if I could show it to you. Let's go there in Outlook and I go to my calendars 27th that's the meeting but it doesn't load it so looks like something has gone wrong let's see if there is any error uh, yes there is and that's the error which I was looking for in fact uh, cannot read context and the problem is simply this if I look into my 
graph data function which we copied up i'm using this dot context now this context is available to me in an spfx project directly you know it, it, it was a property of um, my base adaptive card extension and that is not available in the library and that's what is causing this problem now easier solution you could say is simply just put in as an as a parameter right we can use a context as a parameter and do our stuff true it can be done but there's a problem imagine that this function this context was not really being used in gra get graph data but some other function inherit to get graph data right get graph data is calling something else something else is calling something else and that's the component or function which needs to use context in that case i am doing what is something called prop drilling so i'm just drilling you know i'm putting context as a i'm sending context to 100 functions without 99 of them using it and 100th one is using it it's not a really clean uh, mechanism especially if you're doing react developments what could be the solution to this now the solution that microsoft has come up with is called service locator pattern it's similar to use context if you are uh, familiar with um, react Honestly, I'm not sure why Microsoft did not, rather, I know why Microsoft didn't do exactly like use context because then that would have been a very reactive way to do it, you know, and Microsoft does want it to be open sourced and to be used with everyone. So they went with service locator pattern. Fine with me. Uh, anyways, the way to do that, <laughs> oh, sorry, the way to implement a service locator pattern so the basic idea behind service locator pattern boils down to this imagine we have this ace card which we have written and it is relying on framework to do some graph client you know graph calls and in turn framework class the base class of framework itself is not doing it it's passing on that actual call to subcomponent so in our case we will have to pass on the graph client because framework and subcontinent they have no clue they don't have the context object uh, so the graph client has to pass on the context to framework, framework has to pass it to subcomponent, and then subcomponent does its stuff. Wouldn't it be nice, rather than passing this context along, framework or the subcontinent, subcomponent, I don't know why I'm saying subcontinent again, subcomponent, they simply call some magical piece of code, they pass in the key and they get the actual objects back. So if they pass in the key for SharePoint, they get the SP client object so that they can talk to SharePoint. And if they want graph, they pass in the client, the, the key for the graph and get the graph object back. And not only that, we should, we as a developer should also be able to register our services. We, I could resist, uh, register my own graph client's uh, implementation, which we will be doing in our case. Uh, also, I could be logging, sending a, you know, creating a logging service and adding to my services uh, property bag. It, it, it's basically, actually, it's a hash table. Think of it like that. On one side, you have the key, and other side, you have the objects. And any when, anywhere within the parameters of SharePoint framework uh, can use this hash table as long as he knows what the key to use is. So key, you get the object. You give me the key, you get the object. That's pretty much what it, what's going on. And the benefit, the biggest benefit is that you don't have to pass on these individual objects or the big context object to all this, uh, all this chain uh, of functionality. Not only does it make our code a bit cleaner, especially if you have nested components, but it's also easy to test because in this case, it's really hard if you're writing test cases it's really hard to mimic a context object which is a huge object it's a big object right this way it's pretty easy to do so so let's go ahead and implement our service okay having the theory aside let's go ahead and implement the service locator uh, function over here i'll copy a bunch of code let's remove the get graph data functionality here paste this one that's our graph service with the with the service locator pattern in it i will quickly go to index and change the function oops uh, i need to change graph service over here 
So that's the function, I will, that's the object I will be exposing. So let's see what is going on over there. The first thing in a service locator pattern is to register the service with the framework, with the platform or whatever it is. And the way to do that is with this line. You import the service key from SP Core library, service key and service scope. And I say, hey guy, create me a new service. That is my code and this is my, this is the object that you need to instantiate whenever somebody is asking for this. Uh, for this key and the key which will we will should be using to access this object is this one it's not this one huh? this is only internal to framework this is what we need uh, to access the service rest i am defining my client i can do yeah all my objects are over here and then i say whenever you are done hey framework hey spfx whenever you are done initializing this function this class for me is uh, object of this class then you set up the my ms graph client factory to uh, consume again another service because graph client factory is also a ser implementing service locator pattern it's coming from spfx so i don't need to really pass in the context i don't need to pass in graph client every time somebody has to use graph service all i need to do is to remember my key we will see how to consume it but this is the way I am consuming it. For example, MS Graph Client Factory. As a service scopes, you have all the services registered by anyone, Microsoft, Akshay, you, me, anyone. If they have uh, registered this service, that's the way to consume it. And I pass in the service key for MS Graph Client Factory and I get the object back. And then um, I have my get graph data function. It's exactly the same. Rather than using context, I use the MS Graph Client Factory. So the important thing over here is the way to register it. This is the way to register it. You need to define your constructor so that you can instantiate all the objects. Uh, maybe you need app insights, maybe you need a fetch API, you need some other objects. You can instantiate all of them over here. When finished, pretty important. And then you use, it, it's a regular function that you can do. Having said that, now let's see how we can consume it. Important thing is to first do npm, uh, no, it should be gulp build. Again, okay, there is some functionality. Did I not change it over here? I think I did. Did I not save it? I think, yeah, now better. So gulp build. Remember, it always has to, if you are doing NPM linking or if you, you know, in a library component, you need to do gulp build. You have to do gulp bundle, otherwise it will not work. We do gulp bundle. And it breaks. Why does it break? Uh, it could be because I copied some bunch of code and I did not do NPM I. Perhaps I need to use some libraries. Let me check quickly. Of course, because I need to use, since I am using over here, SPHTTP, so I need to have it over there also in my dependencies. That that was the reason why it was not working. Okay, it's the same as saying npm uh, i SPHTTP, but let's go ahead, clear it. Oops. Okay. We clear it, then I do an npm i so that it can do sphttp again, and then we do gulp build gulp bundle npm link again. So while this is running, let, let's uh, take a while and talk about linking. So every time you saw me, I make a change to my framework, I need to do gulp, help, gulp build gulp bundle and npm link. And then the same thing from the consuming application also. I need to say npm link framework. Now, this is not, uh, in, in idle solution, it should be better, right? You don't have to do all these building again. The way to, the way Microsoft solved this problem was with something called Rush. Uh, it's a custom Microsoft thingy, which they have implemented. Basically, you run Rush on your application. You run these two applications, you know, you run both the projects within it. And then you can seamlessly 
save one project and it gets reflected automatically into another project so no bundling and linking and everything is done you just save you save use that kind of so do have a look look at rush uh, application or maybe i'll also do some um, future video on that now our npm is done so let's see what's going on over here npm is done let's go gulp build it's not production so i'm not using dash dash ship flag but ideally for production scenarios you should be using ship uh, npm link so this will do the trick let's go it like this and from here let me just close it for a while Then say npm link me the I think it was frame work and it should link it for me. Yeah, that it is done. Quick one. I am not sure if we talked about it before. I proceed. Have a look at this thing. I had added it before, uh, but in case you are also using framework uh, library component, you need to mention that library component over here in your dependencies so that sharepoint framework will download it automatically in production scenarios from your app catalog so that's very important to, to know okay that's done so let's go ahead and do a gulp build i oh, know uh, remember i changed my service name over there so it was no longer get service uh, get graph data it was get service library because it's a class now so my bad what do I need to do to consume this solution? So the first thing, of course, would be this does not exist. So it should be graph service. Hey, hey it finds it nice. Uh, so that is my service. Let's copy this thing because I would need it in a minute. Uh, so I will go to init function. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's remove this thingy. Let me paste a bunch of code over here. Graph service in. I have imported my graph service already. That's good. Let's see what is going on over here. Control K U. Set interval. You can already have a look at the graph. So I will not cover that in much detail here. Let's keep it very simple simple is the best now what am i doing i have my graph services so i go ahead and say hey context you have the service scope that is the hash table give me my graph service key which i had registered and this guy graph service dot key is nothing but this guy this one which i returned so that way that's the way it works i get that object of graph service so i get an object of this class in graph service in and then i simply do my get graph data and so on and so forth you know rest everything is exactly the same and it works so that's the way you would consume a graph service or any service uh, via service locator pattern an important thing to know over here is that in give get i'm calling the get um, i'm using this function of get graph data you see on of my service without passing on the context at all and I can do it anywhere in my project, in any library. I, all I need to do is just, just use this line of code and you have the instantiated object of that class and then that class can do anything. You don't have to pass in prop uh, props every time. Very, very important uh, concept for SPFX development. Having said that, let's do a gulp build. See if everything is still working and we haven't broken up anything doing this stuff okie dokie gulp bill uh, gulp serve and if everything goes right i should still be able to see my this context error should go and i should be able to see it so let's refresh the thingy and if we inspect the code nothing here now these are all things but any error no, so inside the API, so that means the call is going. And now we are using library as well as service framework. Cool. So guys, 
uh, that was about it if you like the video please hit like share and subscribe it will go a long long way in curbing my laziness and bringing more video to you thanks a lot till the next time